Do you know compression members exist as columns in steel buildings and as members in trusses? In this lecture, I will talk about design of compression members as per Eurocode 3. This is part 9 of lecture series on steel design. For other parts, please see the links in description down below. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examined life. Buckling happens in a variety of ways. One is local buckling, and we take into account local buckling through section classification. So regardless of if we are designing a beam or column, the first thing that we have to do is to classify the section to see that if there is any local buckling happening or not. Secondly, we have global buckling. There are two ways in which global buckling happens. One is flexural buckling, other is lateral torsional buckling. Flexural buckling happens in columns, and we take into account effects of flexural buckling by working out buckling resistance, NBRD. And we take into account effects of lateral torsional buckling by working out MBRD or buckling moment resistance. So my next stage is to design columns and to see what does it mean by flexural buckling. Here I'm saying design of compression members. The reason is that compression members are not only used as columns, but they can be used in variety of ways. They can be used members in a truss. They can be used some members in towers. A few examples here are Stratford DLR station. So if you go there, you will see these elliptical columns. Heathrow Terminal 5, you will see these elliptical columns. You would say that why don't we use circular columns? Some clients, they prefer to use columns which look beautiful. The only reason for them being used is that they are aesthetic beauty. They look amazing. So that's why they use elliptical sections. But to be honest, I mean, columns can be of any sections. So my topic now is to, to design compression members. And what you will take away from this is that at least you will be able to design a column when you finish this lecture. This is how it's outlined back down to column design, buckling behavior, and then design process to Euro code three, and then some illustrative example. We use compression members as building columns in frame bracing. We use them as truss members, cord and bracing. We use them as beam columns as well. So columns or compression members are essentially of two types. One is stocky, bulky, heavy or obese columns, but don't use obese in technical language, just use stocky. Stocky columns, they fail by yielding or material failure. It means they utilize their full potential. They can utilize their full material strength. Similar to tension resistance, we can say that compressive resistance, NCRD, could be AFY. Over gamma M0, gamma M0 is actually once, probably discard that. The formula for finding out the compressive resistance of stocky or heavy columns is AFY. So I will show you two videos, very important videos. You will love them. For slender members, they will fail by buckling. In other words, I can say that they fail at a lower load than heavy columns. The reason is that because they are thin, they are slender, they are skinny, they fail by geometric instability, which is termed as buckling. So in this case, I will work out NBRD or buckling resistance. In most of the columns, often it's necessary to work out buckling resistance. Most of the columns, they would fall between two extremes. One extreme is that it will fail by brushing or yielding. Other extreme is that it will fail by buckling and buckling is elastic in nature, but normally practical columns will fall between in the range which is in between. NBRD will certainly be worked out. So I would like to show you a video. This is a stocky column. You saw that it's failing due to material strength. Now pay close attention to this column and see how it's failing.
Now you can see that the the buckling pattern for these columns is slightly uh, different. The reason is that the right column it is it is pinned at these both ends and the left column is pinned at the top and fixed at the bottom. So this brings me to the buckling length. If the entire length of the column is being utilized, then we say that buckling length is equal to length of the member. So LCR in this case is equal to one times L. On the other hand here, you can see that the bottom bit is not rotating. The top bit is contributing. So here we say that 0.85 times L or 85% of the length is being utilized. If it is fixed at both ends, then we say that 70% of the length is being utilized. And the length being utilized is termed as LCR or buckling length, which you will see in a minute. These are various column failures. The first one is undeformed column. The second one is squashing, which happens in short columns, and then overall flexural buckling. And then you can see some kind of torsional buckling as well. So if the load is not being applied at the center of the column, at the shear center, then it can cause torsion. You can see finally, local buckling is happening as well. You can use any shape for the columns. You don't have any restriction or compression members. I mean, it's not just columns. We are designing a compression member. The Eurocode 3 procedure for compression members is that we have to check first of all this lambda, which is slenderness. If slenderness is less than 0.2, then we say that we do not need to check its buckling resistance. We just check its cross-sectional resistance. If slenderness is greater than 0.2, then we need to check its buckling resistance. Now, how do we work out design buckling resistance of a compression member? We simply use this reduction factor approach. This is equal to key reduction factor times cross-sectional resistance. If we have one meter column and if we have a 10 meter column, certainly their capacity is not going to be same because 10 meter column will have less capacity because it's very long and if it turns out to be thin as well then certainly its capacity is going to be reduced the capacity of a one meter column is say 100 kilonewton the capacity of 10 meter column is going to be probably 20 kilonewtons so it's going to be highly reduced you can find out this capacity in this blue book very quickly s275 I have these different columns. Now you can see that, for example, if I'm choosing this 203, 203 by 127, the capacity we are considering NBZ. So buckling happens in minor axis always. That, that is the critical situation. NBZ RD, which is the buckling resistance for one meter column is 4,280. If I'm using the same column and then if it is eight meters length, then you can see that its capacity is highly reduced. It is 1170. And what is the reason for that? The reason is buckling. Because of buckling, the capacity is highly reduced. So it is very important to, to check buckling. If we do not check buckling, it means that we are highly overestimating the capacity or resistance of a compression member or a column. Now what we are doing here is actually already done for us in interactive blue book so we are trying to find out axial compression we are trying to find out this buckling buckling resistance can be directly found out in this table when you are actually working in a design office but it is important to know that you know the procedure so that if a section is not in the blue book so that you're able to design a column and you're familiar with the process what is happening over here now here you can see that you have vertical axis that is a reduction factor key horizontal axis that is non-dimensional slenderness and this slenderness in shows that if slenderness increases the column is becoming thin and slender the dotted line over here shows material yielding. It means that this limit 0.2 comes from this experimental values. This is 0 0.2. For lambda less than or equal to 0 0.2, I do not need to check any buckling because the reduction factor NBRD is equal to reduction factor times the cross-sectional resistance, which is AFY. If the slenderness is more, you can see that the buckling is more. So for example here, this is EHS or elliptical hollow sections and this is CHS. So these are different sections, but essentially the pattern follows the curve that you see over here. So more you have slenderness, more you will have reduction. It means that, for example, if it is here and if your lambda is say 2.2 or something, at that point your reduction is 
20%. It means that if the capacity is 100 kN, the buckling capacity is going to be 20 kN. And then these are different design codes. AISC is American, EC3 is European, and AS4100 is Australian. The key thing here is that for stocky columns, lambda dash less than 0.2, you just have to check cross-sectional resistance NCRD, which is similar to tensile resistance, simply area times material strength, AFY. But if a column is slender, if lambda dash is greater than 0.2, in that case, you definitely need to check buckling resistance. And we use a reduction factor approach to work out buckling resistance. Now, this is extremely important. I want everyone to understand this process. Step one is to classify a section. When you have a section simply classified, step two is to find out lambda, is to check if, if buckling resistance is, is required or not. And formula for that lambda dash bar is equal to AFY over NCR, where NCR is elastic critical load or Euler load. NCR is equal to phi over L wire into EI, where this L is actually LCR. But obviously we have made the conversions and then you will only use this formula, but it's important that you know it's equal to LCR over IZ, where IZ is radius of gyration in minor axis direction, which you can get from section table. Multiplied by one over lambda one, lambda one is equal to 93.9 epsilon, where epsilon is 235 over Fy. So once you have worked out this lambda dash to determine if buckling check is required or not, then if lambda is less than 0.2, it means that looking at the curve, as you saw, no buckling resistance check is required. Even if we check it, the reduction factor is going to be one, which will not serve our purpose. So we would rather be better off simply checking the cross-sectional resistance. So let's see how do we do it. So check NED over NCRD. As I said earlier, that we always have to check applied versus resistance. NED is applied load and NCRD is cross-sectional resistance. And the formula for wherever you see this RD, it is the capacity or resistance. Wherever you see ED, it's the design load, the one that is applied. So design has load has to be smaller as compared to the capacity. So capacity is again very simple. It's AFY over gamma naught, which is similar to tensile resistance because the effects of buckling are not taken into account here. What about if lambda dash is greater than 0.2? In that case, you have to check NED over NBRD, which is the buckling resistance. And what formula do we use for buckling resistance? For buckling resistance, we use this formula key times AFY over gamma M1. Again, gamma M1 is one. AFY is similar to what you get over here, which is the cross-sectional resistance. Some kind of reduction factor, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, whatever, times the area of the section times the material strength. Now, how do we work out this reduction factor? There's a quick formula. Key is equal to one over phi plus under root phi square minus lambda dash square. Phi can be worked out as 0.5 into bracket 1 plus alpha lambda dash minus 0.2 plus lambda dash square. Do not be tormented by this formula. These are given in extracts to Eurocode 3 design aids. If you go there, you'll be able to find all these formula. But to be honest, this one slide will do the job. I mean, it's giving you pretty much everything on how to design a column. And then simply we will follow this design recipe to solve a problem. The key thing to remember here is for short columns, we just check its cross-sectional resistance or compressive resistance, which is similar to tensile resistance, AFY. For long columns, we need to check buckling as well. Otherwise, the design implication is that we will be highly overestimating the loading if we don't check buckling, if it needs to be checked. And then we say that NED over NBRD should be less than or equal to one. This is something that we will use for design of everything. If we are designing a column, we will say that NED over NBRD. If we are designing a beam, a restrained beam, we will say MED over MCRD. If we are designing unrestrained beam, we will say MED divided by MBRD.
This is something that you will use across the board in any design. The applied versus capacity should be less than or equal to one. So, so, so what, what's the uh, alpha in the equation? How did you get yes. that? Alpha is a factor which we will determine from properties of the section and from table 6.2 and 6.1. These are tables in Eurocode. I will show in a minute. The most important thing I want you to take away from here is that for a short column, stocky or bulky column, you just determine its cross-sectional resistance. That is simply area times material strength, AFY. And for long columns, you apply a reduction factor to the same thing. And that reduction factor has to be less than one. How do we work out this reduction factor? We work out this reduction factor through this recipe, which is here. Again, uh, this is the same story here. Compression resistance is equal to NED over NCRD. Equation numbers that you see here, these are same as you will find them in Eurocode 3. So that when you go and work in design office, you have to specify which equation number in margin line, which equation number you're using when you are designing something. That's the reason that my equation numbers most of the time for Eurocode 3 at least would be the same as they appear in Eurocode 3 itself. Now this is further detail of NCRD. So class 1, 2 and 3 sections NCRD does not change. So this has been taken from earlier table that I showed you in section classification. For class 4 sections it is A effective FY over gamma M0. But in our case, most of the time we will be having class 1 or 2 sections. Now buckling resistance NED over NBRD this gives us a little bit of more details. NBRD is key AFI or gamma M1. And then for class 4 sections, again, effective, but we will not use this class 4 section. Now the procedure this is the same formula for key and P and lambda dash is equal to this value. But again, I gave you modified formula earlier. Now, where do we get this alpha? For alpha, we go to table 6.2, where uh, we get this H over B values from section table. And then we see that where buckling is happening and then from there we choose a curve then we come back here for example if the curve is b value is going to be 0.34 and i will tell you in a minute how do we get these values lambda dash again as i mentioned earlier it's lcr over iz into one over lambda one where lambda one is equal to 93.9 epsilon where epsilon is under root 235 over fy where I is radius of gyration about relevant axis. Most of the time we will be considering minor axis because this is where buckling is going to happen. This is the table for finding out LCR. Again, it gives you lots of fancy things, but the key thing to remember here is if we have pinned ends in most of the steel buildings, the joints are going to be pinned. By pin, I mean that they will not transfer moments from the beam to the columns. This is one extreme. For that extreme, we use LCR, buckling length is equal to one times L, which is this one. And we have another extreme, which is both joints are fixed. It means that beam is put inside a wall and it's completely fixed. It does not rotate, then we use this this one or if it is a steel beam and if we put uh, upper plates lower plates and if we weld it then it will certainly be totally fixed but if we bolt it most of the time it will be pinned in case of the steel buildings but in some of the cases where bottom end is fixed top end is pinned then we use this 0.85 or bottom and top both are semi rigid means they transfer some moment then we simply say that it is 0.85 so this is the situation two ends are pinned you can see this here that entire length is being utilized so it's one times l and again b is two ends are fixed in that case we use 0.7 times l you might be wondering how do i remember all these difficult formula for this there is a quick solution if you click on this bit ly slash steel design it will take you to a quick recipe for design of compression members a dropbox folder no sign in is required if you click on that you will be able to see this two page recipe a design recipe where you have all the formula which are given which i have used in this lecture starting from compression resistance to buckling resistance all the way to slenderness formula and imperfection buckling length and all the design steps